first of all, today we have a very, very, very special guest coming to the show. He's a former NFL defensive and former co-host of ESPN Sports Nation, an FS1 Speak for Yourself, and founder and, C of, and CEO of ProjectTransition.org, an organization that provides resources and assistance to families in need. I welcome Marcellus Wally to the show. Welcome to the show, man. Oh, man, to my favorite show. <laughs> oh, I mean, talk, uh, talking about watch hours, I go by what am I consuming? <laughs> Nothing more than you, Charles. Nothing more than Dreamers Pro. Shout out to you and Marco, the yes. famous name with no face. Respect <laughs> to you guys. <laughs> Shout out to Marco, man. Shout out to Marco. First of all, I just want to say um, it's a huge, huge pleasure uh, to have you on the show, just to give you guys, the audience, give you a quick backstory. One day I was just kind of scrolling through my Instagram. Nobody knows me. I don't, I don't, I don't have any followers on Instagram. And then I just see a message with a blue check and it says, great job. Love the show. And it says Marcellus Wiley. I'm like, nah, this, this, this can't be Mar Marcellus Wiley. So I click on the profile and then I look and I'm like, oh my God, it is him. And then I message him and I say, thank you. And he responds. I'm like, what is this real? So <laughs> before you know it. A few a few weeks later, here we are, man. So, Marcellus, welcome to the show, man. It's a huge pleasure. I oh, appreciate, appreciate it. you, man. I got to give you flowers, man. Uh, like, it's rare that you see someone out there doing something, especially doing what you're doing, and doing it in a way not only do you respect, but you can learn from. And it feels like your positivity, uh, your analysis, your depth, your intelligence is something that I feel and wow. I deeply respect. So that's wow. why I'm a fan of yours, man. Wow. So that's why I hit you back. Cause I was like, wow. oh my God, Charles and me back. <laughs> wow, wow, no man, it's, those are, those are just, uh, wonderful to hear from you. So I actually, when I was following your show, obviously I know about you, we all know Marcellus Wiley, your, your household name. But as I was watching your show, I noticed that the way you, 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 you approach sports media, obviously you're covering the news and giving your opinions, but you also, were taking us behind the scenes in terms of the, you know, the business aspect and the reason why a lot of people are making the decisions that they make in the independent space. And I want to ask you, as someone that worked on ESPN, that worked at FS1, what, what caused you to decide that you, you know what, I want to transition into the independent space. What was, what was the thing that led you to do that? Yeah, man, I got my start in media when I was an active player. So I'm in Buffalo and I always call myself the first Kardashian because I had a reality show in Buffalo my rookie year. Wow, um, wow, wow. I always, yeah, I had this personality where I didn't look down at the media. I looked at it, I was a man or a woman with a job and they couldn't do what I did and I couldn't mm -hmm. do what they do. So I was like, mm -hmm. all right, let me translate what happened on the field so you can tell everyone else, the millions of people that love what I do, mm -hmm. what's going on. So I had mm -hmm. a real healthy respect and relationship with the media. So that led me to immediately hitting the ground running in terms of having media relationships and being able to have my own broadcast career. So it started in Buffalo reality show. They used to come over my house. Mm -hmm. I'm cooking, I'm hanging out with my family, et cetera go to the mall, talk to girls, buy hats. They're just filming all that. Whatever. This is 1997, y'all. Then wow. I'm at NFL Network before NFL Network is even open. Uh, they didn't even have hmm. facilities, really. At the same time, I was a on-the-field correspondent. So the teams that I was on when we didn't make the playoffs, I would go out there and interview Peyton Manning and LT. And wow. that was the first wow. time I realized I wanted to do this Hmm. Once I was done playing football. Hmm. Now, it was because the scrum would go around Peyton Manning and it'd be 50 reporters all trying to shove a mic in his face. <laughs> and he would look and give me the eye contact and be like, you come here because wow. that's my boy. So wow, that really wow, let me wow. know I could translate wow. this game to all those out there, the masses, and do it in a way I wanted to do it. Um, you fast forward, I'm at ESPN mm -hmm. and I worked there for 11 years. Uh, then go to FS1 for four years. So I've worked everywhere. And to answer your question, the thing I didn't like, there hmm. were a lot, a lot of things I loved, a ton of things I loved. Some of the things I didn't like were, one, how we didn't really take care of broadcasting the game in the way that we're supposed to do it. The hmm. entertainment factor got so out of control that we were losing the education factor in terms hmm. of really just helping people understand what's going on. And that's not mm. just X's and O's, just what the players are going through and really doing that. And I just started mm. to see us get away from that 
but who am I to complain? I also didn't like how like closed we were in terms of we're doing this for the fans. We're just a medium, a conduit. Why are we all sudden acting like we're the stars? Like we're bigger than the players we're covering yeah. and then acting like our personalities matter more than what the production yeah. of the players is. So I was like, you know, and I'm the one that would say it on air. I would clown a dude. Like a dude would talk about another player. I'd be like, dog, he better than you. And that would just be the end of that segment. <laughs> and Kevin would be like, Marcellus, that ain't the script. That ain't what we're supposed to be doing. I was like, well, you better calm down because you got on a suit up here in this studio. He out there sweating and getting it. So what he failed in that moment. I also hated that we never told people how much money we made. I'm a former football player. Everybody knows how much money I made because right. of USA Today and websites. So I was like, why y'all up here acting like y'all the big dog? And I know how much you make. It ain't that much. Or, you know, you flexing on cats like you got it all. And I'm like, dog, I know the real. So basically I got stuck because I was a former athlete who did it at the highest level but also was on broadcast media doing it at the highest level. Right. And I wouldn't let one rob the other to pay the other. So it was just that situation. I just wanted to let people know for real what really went down. These people are human as well. Uh, right. This experience is amazing, but it's not perfect. So when right. they act like the athletes got to be perfect, I wanted to flip that energy on them and let them know they got some issues too. Well, you, you you know, it's you're saying this, and as you were talking, apart from listen to what you were saying, it, it kind of seg segues me somewhere else, and I, I and I want to ask you this: as someone that, let me just be honest, we're kind of like, we're coming from the outside looking in. We didn't know anybody. I don't know anybody really, uh, to be honest with you. So we don't know the do's and the don'ts. But the way I've always seen it, as someone on the outside looking in, was the 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 guys in the media are always going to go at the athletes because that's their job, to cover the sport and call out what they see. However, what I've been noticing on other shows with bigger names like um, the Dan Lebitard show, he's been talking about the way the coverage of sports, to go back to what you just said, it seems to be dumbing down, and it's less about the analysis and more about the entertainment and the hype. What do you, what, what do you think about what Dan Lebitard was trying to say at that, from that standpoint based on your experience? Yeah, I mean, we all can witness that right now we're getting farther and farther away from just talking pure sports, mm. pure X's and O's. And that's okay. I'm not upset that we're not just talking third and goal and how many yards per carry. You know, I'm not mad at that. Um, what I'm mad at is when we use I'm just doing my job as cover to really mm. talk about a person mm. and forget mm. that we're here for sport or we're here for players, but we're yeah. not here for you to attack that person. Or if we are here for you to attack that person, keep the same energy and allow that person to attack you and don't get your mm. feathers ruffled. Mm. And so I know all these guys, and I always tell people this, the athlete ego is different than the entertainer's ego because the athlete's yeah. ego is built on, I am better than you. Oh, I play against you. I'm faster than you. I'm stronger mm. than you. We mm. beat you. That's not an entertainer's ego. An entertainer's ego is I went into a room after this interview and he liked my film and he said that I'm the man. Mm. So you're built off, off of a, someone else's opinion where I'm mm. built off of the fact and the merit that you can't beat me. So I got mm. a different ego than a lot of these cats. So mm. I don't have the same insecurities that they do. Right, <laughs> so right, when I awesome. go at somebody, I'm expecting them to return fire, offense, defense. Mm. When they go at somebody, they either duck when they return fire or say, oh, that's not fair. But he was like, dog, I'm just shooting the shot you just shot. <laughs> and that's when I start giggling. Like, these dudes ain't built the same. And it's mm. okay. It's a different model. It's a different makeup of the individual that becomes the king of sports media than someone on the field, on the court who becomes the king of that sport. Wow, wow. Be uh, beautifully said, man. Now, I, I wanted to ask you, now that you are in the independent space and you're really paving the way because, I mean, you know, uh, the, you know, the best practices. How am I paving the way? You got more subscribers than me. No, 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 no. Forget, <laughs> forget, forget, about, forget about that, man. You're you're the household name here. Let's be honest. I mean, you're Marcellus Wiley. For, for God, don't nobody, don't nobody know me, really. But uh, <laughs> no, um, I wanted to ask you, as someone that worked on TV, and I, I, I don't know what that is. Just describe the transition from working for a big corporation to you saying, you know what, 
I want to bet on myself because a lot of people have not. It seems like a lot yeah. of people are still holding on for their life to these companies. And you were like, no, I'm willing to bet on myself and go independent. What do you think was, what has been the biggest challenge for you during this transition? Yeah, I mean, it was a process. Look, and I think the process really started with one day, my friend, Matt Lindzen, I'm out at his house at a barbecue and he's like, man, you need to start a podcast. Now, this is coming off of Max and Marcellus. Max is already at first take. I uh, love doing radio. Everyone loved our radio show. It's real intimate when you're vulnerable on the radio versus right. even television. You get a different response. So uh, I missed radio. And he was like, just do a podcast. But this is around 2017. I'm at ESPN. I got two shows. I'm like, nah. And I'm going to be real. I looked down on podcasts at the time. I was like, mm. man, that's basement stuff. That's staying at home with mama stuff. I was like, I'm not doing that. I got two shows on ESPN. Forget it. So at that time, I didn't know this, but Pat McAfee was trying to get a show or at least interviews uh, to do the rounds at ESPN. And they said, no, he couldn't get right. a show at ESPN, right? right? So mm -hmm. it's the same time I got two shows at ESPN and this guy can't even get in the door. Then 2018 happens. I go with Jason Whitlock. We do speak for yourself for two years. Jason mm -hmm. in the middle of the night leaves and goes to the blaze after he went to the outkick first. So mm -hmm. he leaves me. Now, I wasn't mad at what he did. I was mad at how he did it because he never told me he was going to leave, even mm -hmm. though I knew he was going to leave because I have contacts and the bosses told me, coworkers told me. I'm mm -hmm. fine. Jason mm -hmm. leaves me. Now, who's going to be my co-host? It was about a month or two. They were trying to figure that out. Ends up being Emmanuel Acho. Between right. that time, my agent, super agent, Nick Khan, who calls me one day and says, Marcellus, I'm going to move on for another opportunity. I could be the president of WWE wrestling, and right. I got to swing for the fences. I was like, all right, I love this guy to death to this day. Cobra is my guy. So I said, I respect that. Got to do it. We're around the same age as well. He leaves. So for the last two years at Fox, I didn't have an agent. Everybody's calling. Wow. What's next? What's next? What's next? What they didn't know that the seeds were being planted for me to think about doing something else. So then hmm. Acho comes on and Acho know, and I have a great relationship. I've known him forever. Um, we built something. I liked our conversations. I liked our show, but he was doing what Whitlock was doing in the terms of he was planning to do the show without me or do a different show. What, what, Wasn't why, mad why, at why, what he was doing. Sorry, sorry to cut you off, but why? What, oh, yeah. what, is it, what, what was what? What do you think was the reason? Is it that maybe the chemistry wasn't there? Because looking at it, I mean, when I watch the show, you guys are great. So, what do you think was the reason for that? Maybe just wanted to do something different, or. Oh, uh, no. I, no, I ain't going to give you no PR answer. Yeah. Acho wants to be a star. Acho is a star to me. I think he has a tremendous talent. Whereas right. personality lies in your life, it could be yes or no. But I get it. But the dude is a talent. He can sure. read that 100%. prompter. He can seduce the damn prompter almost. It's crazy. He's a talent. He's an orator. 100%. That said, he wanted to be a star. This is a guy who played in the NFL for like four years, didn't get his bread. Um, didn't get to the heights that he wanted to. You go to University of Texas, you're supposed to be a dog in the league, and it didn't work out for him. I ain't mad at it. And now he had his shot. He had Oprah Winfrey as an ally. He had his uncomfortable conversations that blew up. Uh, he wrote the best-selling books. Like, the dude was ready to be a star. And working with me, out of his respect for me, out of his reverence for me, sometimes deference, and just... Me uh, being there, my presence, it right. was quote unquote my show just because I was there first and it really wasn't my show. It was Colin and then Jason Woodlock and then me. But the point is, he just didn't feel like he could fully flex. And I knew that. So he didn't know that I was also thinking of doing other things. Other so things. I wasn't mad at what he was trying to do. And the bosses told me and coworkers told me, but he didn't tell me. I wasn't mad at what he was trying to do. Mm -hmm. I was mad at how he was doing it. So we shaking hands, hey, big bro, every day. But I'm like, dog, you're taking all these meetings. You're trying to do all this stuff around me or without me. Just talk to me. Now, why am I making this an issue with Whitlock and Acho? Because when Max Kellerman was getting recruited to go to first take, I remember the phone call. And I remember him hanging it up during our commercial break. And I remember him saying, wow. bro, we got to talk next break. 
guess what's going down? Well, I see. And that's I the way see. I would have done it. That's I the way see. Max did it. So that's my standard. I am not jealous or hating on anybody because whatever someone has done in this industry or on the field, I have checked that box as well. So I don't come with that spirit. I come with the spirit of their ethics and there is a standard and expectation that I want. Let me fast forward. So Acho and I, I do the show for two years. Time's up. Uh, the bosses are like, we want to change the direction of the show, all this stuff. They wanted to do a lighter show. They wanted to do the show that they're doing now. And I just thought that was behind me in terms of I've already done those type of shows. Sports Nation, you know, lighter, more surface, little shock jock. I was just like, I want it deeper. So yeah. then they offered me the opportunity to go to First Things First. But they were thinking it could come, it was going to come to L.A., but it didn't end up coming to L.A. It stayed in New York. I tried, Charles, for like a week in my mind to like do the stray hand plan, I call it, where I'm going to go to New York on Monday, come back Friday. The family will be okay. I'll come back with the big check, and we're good. And I tried to run assimilation in my house for like a day. Wait, wait. And I was sorry. like, let me. You, you, you ran a simulation. In my house. Really? In LA. Wow. Like, wow. I, like, I'm, like I'm not wow. there, but I want to see what happens if I'm not here for okay, five not, days. Okay, not everything will work. Got you. Got you. Got you. And I look at it. I was like, this ain't going to work. <laughs> These three <laughs> little kids I, I got asking. going. That's all I got. Wear my wife out. <laughs> wear her out. So I had to nix that. Um, we, we, we tried to build a couple other things with Fox. It didn't work out. I love those guys over there. No hate, no animus at all. What gave me the confidence in that long-winded story was this. Mm -hmm. Pat McAfee couldn't get a gig where I had two gigs. Mm -hmm. End up coming back. Wop, wop. Lapping everybody 10 times. Everybody Crazy. bow down Crazy. your second place to Crazy. me in terms of what I've acquired, right? So that was crazy. Then... Jason Woodlock having his success, huh? Then Nick Khan becoming Nick Khan, who runs WWE right now. Look up how much he got in a bonus just last year. Wow. And I was wow. like, all these people that are close to me, connected to me, and even Max Kellerman, when he left me to go to first take, he still got his bread. He still got a huge platform. I was like, everybody is taking a gamble on themselves. Right. And I'm sitting here fat and full in this velvet coffin, just going to continue to do something I didn't fully want to do because I'm not a shock jock guy. I'm not a debater. I'm a discusser. Right. So I was like, when are you going to bet on yourself? It sounds like the stars are aligning to do it right now. So when all those other things started to devolve, I finally said, this is time. You know, it's funny you said that, that you said you're not a shock jock and you're not somebody, you're, you're, you're not a debater. You're somebody that likes to just have conversations. It's funny you said that because I'm sure you've seen some episodes of me kind of defending Max Kellerman. I don't know Max Kellerman. I don't know any of these people, but it helps me. I, I believe that helps me to kind of express my opinion because I don't, I don't know anyone. Mm -hmm. And as someone that watched Max on television for years on first take, Max to me, one was funny, but overall Max, I mean, he could be sarcastic at times, but he seemed like a very respectful person. The thing that bothered me deeply, deeply was I didn't like the way he was being spoken to as a married man with kids. It really bothered me. So when I heard you about a month or so ago, Marcellus Wiley, who was not about the drama and the foolishness, is always like keeping it, you know, peaceful and clean. For you to stand, when you stood up and spoke on the behalf of Max Kellerman, I was like, it must have gotten to the point where even you were like, enough is enough. What made you decide to come to the aid and the defense of Max Kellerman at that moment? Yeah, man, to take it from the top of what you said, um, you're in a good position. Um, and it was a difficult position for me to be in because since you don't know these people, these characters, it's kind of like the documentary where you don't have to get the principals to sign off. Like, that's going to be mm -hmm. a good documentary. They ain't mm -hmm. sign off on it. They don't have a uh, last edit. You know, they can't mm -hmm. say, oh, say this, say that. So I know all these people. So it's almost like, right. damn, I'm going to sound like I'm killing my homie, but I'm not. But I'm based on the truth. 
I always tell everybody, I love the truth more than any of these fools. And I love them all. <laughs> but the truth matters more. That's how I was raised. So, dog, if you can't handle the truth, maybe we shouldn't be homies. Simple as that. Wow. That said, what made me have to finally correct Stephen A. Smith was this. I'm at Fox, and I'm watching First Take, and I'm watching them get down, and I'm like, one, that ain't Max to the fullest. I'm like, Max, what's wrong with you? And two, I caught what you caught. I was like, damn, Stephen A. Smith is belittling my dog. Like, what are you doing? And getting away with it just because, see how Acho felt sometimes with me? Because I was there first. That's how Max felt with Stephen A. Because he was there first. You feel like you own one because they brought you on, right? And this is the LeBron Dwayne Wade first year Miami Heat issue. I know that behind the scenes as well. LeBron gets there, but it's Dwayne Wade's county and house and team. And LeBron like, mm, I don't want to flex like that. And then finally, <laughs> the assistant coach was like, D Wade was like, come on, like let's just right stop playing, <laughs> right, <laughs> right, exactly. stop playing. Like let's go ahead and do you. So a lot of times these relationships, when you got two top dogs. It doesn't go smoothly because one mm. of them is not fully flexing. So that's how mm. that went. So I'm watching Stephen A. Smith just talk about Max, talk to Max. And I was like, he ain't respecting his partner. But I'm working at Fox. Max is still working with him. I'm like, let it be. I don't want to mess up Max's bread. Right. Then Max is off that show, but he's still at ESPN. And I'm at Fox. I ain't going to do nothing because he still got his bread and he moved on. Then I leave FS1, but Max is still at ESPN. I said, don't mess with his bread. Because mm. Stephen A. Smith's still going on this tour of assassinating his character. And then when I finally, I'm a fan of Joe Budden. actually know Joe Budden way back. We used to hang out a little bit. And I'm watching the show because I love his show. And I'm watching just like a fan, dog. And I'm watching Stephen A. Smith, and they went to him. And the way he flexed on Max two years later, after you already done shot and killed the dude and got him off the show, you dancing on the grave, even Joe Button was like, oh, come on, Stephen A. Like, yeah, he, yeah, he and was I like, was he, like. Yeah, he was, even he was surprised. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, yeah like, yeah. what, what kind of, and to me, that's fraud. Dudes like that are frauds. I'm like, nah. Hmm. So I'm listening intently, and I'm finally like, oh, wait a minute. I'm not at Fox. Max ain't at ESPN. This uh, ain't going to hurt Max. I uh, didn't call Max. Matter of fact, I haven't spoken to Max before that. Uh, before that clip I saw, I talked to him like a couple months ago. And I haven't talked to him since. We text each other a couple times with some funny memes. Point being, I ain't do that for Max. I ain't mm. do that to attack Stephen A. Mm. I did that to correct this course of like, dog, you better recognize what you're doing. And I'm a former athlete, and I'm a former broadcaster in mainstream media. And that ain't how we supposed to get down. We ain't right. here for that. And right. you dancing on the grave of this dude, and then try to start ripping his stripes and credentials off just so you could seem more powerful. Mm. I was like, somebody going to have to shine a light on these insecurities. Mm. And I was like, there's no one better than me, because I know everybody. I know everybody involved. And more importantly, I love the truth more than any of these fools. So I just had to set the record straight, speak the facts, and let it just go. And be be respectful, because I do like Stephen A. Right. That is the homie. When I see him next time, there's no love lost. And in part, I think that's why he hasn't come back at me. I was speaking those facts, and I ain't really come at him sideways. Well, speaking of Stephen A. Smith, there are so many big names in sports media. Who are some of the people you look at and say, man, like, this guy or this woman, they're really good. Who are some of the people you're like, man, I admire this person because of how good they are at their work? Who are some of those people, if there, if any? Um, Dan Patrick, uh, uh, Colin Coward on the <laughs> Colin be spitting. Yeah, Colin. Uh, on, on mainstream media, uh, those guys I really like. Um, I don't like a lot of the analysts anymore or people underneath them because – I know what they're doing and I know their role and I know what they're trying to do. So mm -hmm. when you're not the host of a show, mm -hmm. like a Stephen A, a Skip, it's a lot of people pleasing going on, even in their analysis. Like you, mm -hmm. you start wearing costumes, mm -hmm. you start saying stuff like Skip and Stephen A would say just to like go viral. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of guys that I used to really like 
that I'm like, ah, oh, they're getting cotton candy up there just trying to make their name, which I can't be mad at, but that doesn't make me respect you. Um, right. In this space, it's you. Uh, I like Jason Whitlock, even when he says things I totally either hate or disagree. Because one thing about Whitlock, he ain't going to say it without supporting it. Yeah. Now, the Dion hate is insane to the membrane. I just talked to him like two weeks ago. I was like, dog, what you doing? Because Dion, stop. It's insane. It's insane. It's insane to the membrane. What's wrong with you? You okay? But uh, I, I like Whitlock because he does go there wherever there is. And he's true to himself, even though I know the personality, a lot of times rubs people the wrong way. But um, I would say it's a short list, man, because it's just like there's a certain way that I like to see it. Uh, I like to build things up from the truth and let it just kind of blossom from there. But it right. seems like right now we're building it off of story, narrative, and then we just let it fill in the blanks. So I'm not a fan of that kind of craft, that creative. You you, you mentioned Deion Sanders, and I want to ask, ask some questions about him. But before we get to him, where do you see this? And this is a question Marco and I discussed, Marco, the, the co-founder of Dreamers Pro for the audience. And I'm like, this, it seems like the sports media landscape is evolving so quickly. I have we, we have no idea where it's going. Where do you see this space in the next three to five years? Um, I think it's evolving on course as projected, but we didn't really listen or catch wind of what was actually forecasted. So I, I feel late, but at the same time, many people say I'm early in terms of me having the platforms I've had, and now I'm in the independent space. I don't know what the calendar says. But let me tell you this. Way back in late 90s, Bill Gates said, look, content is king. Everyone's heard that phrase, right. but I don't think everyone's digested what that meant. That evolved, and a lot of the VCs, a lot of the tech companies, a lot of the people behind the scenes that really pulled the strings took content as king to everyone is a content creator. And that mm. means everybody. If you have a public profile, your grandma who just shares pictures of the reunion and has nine followers is a creator because she's putting herself out right. in persona right. and her real life for others to digest. So add them up. Content is king and everyone's a creator. The last part of that equation is, and since everyone's a creator, everyone's their own channel. So what it is, is all the audience grab. ESPN, when they started in what, the late 70s, Fox, FS1, all they are are like these vessels that gather audience. And then they hmm. just make sure that the advertisers come to them because they have audience. Well, what you're seeing happen is the disruption of those vessels because those individuals, athletes, people like me, people like you have audience as well. So why do you have to be a magnet to their vessel when mm. you can attract audience yourself? So now content is king. Everyone's a creator. So that everyone's a channel everyone's going to be their own channel. And then you're going to have Logan Paul and, and he has 20 some million people. Then you're like, damn, how many people are watching ESPN? Maybe not as many, maybe more. Depends on if it's a live sporting event or just a show, et cetera. We're all going to a place where it's going to be all fragmented, but that's going to bring it all whole. We're all going to be our own channels. You're already your own channel. I'm my own channel because we're bringing audience. You have your sponsors. I have my sponsors. They continue to grow. The numbers continue to grow. And that's what's going to create you being an ESPN, me being an FS1. Wow. Powerful. No, I wanted to ask you about Dion before we, we switch over to, to uh, the NBA because I want to get your take, your opinion on some things. Dion, say, I'm, I'm not... As someone growing up, I know football, but we don't discuss football so well because I didn't follow it the way I follow basketball. But when Deion Sanders hit the scene with the Colorado Buffaloes, my wife and I sat down and watched a college football game. And I said to myself, I said, this isn't, she, doesn't, she, never, she never watched a football game. Mm. What do you think about Deion Sanders' impact on college football thus far? And what do you think he can do moving forward? Oh, man, he has been the energy that they have needed, sorely needed. Um, 
And what he's done is made them reimagine what college football is and will mm. be going forward. Uh, that energy is this, and it's contagious all around. I'll give you a real live example. I just went to the UCLA Washington State game a couple weeks ago. Both teams at the time were ranked, and Washington State was ranked 13th. Mm. The stadium was half full. The Rose Bowl, big Rose Bowl, half full. I was in a suite with the AD of UCLA, Martin Jarman, and the Big Ten commissioners were there, right? And they were looking around and talking about, like, okay, we're going to have this Big Ten, obviously, now part of UCLA, USC, being a part of it. We can't have this, right? You know, like half stadium. Like, you go to Michigan, Ohio State, it's crazy. Penn State, White House, it's insane. So we're going to bring that energy here. But guess who's bringing that energy to that same Rose Bowl this Saturday, mm. 530, I think, the Colorado Buffaloes, been sold out for a month. <laughs> wow. Not ranked as high as Washington State either, wow. but it's sold out. And everybody knows I got the hookup and been blowing me up to get tickets to that game. <laughs> I can't go. I got a coach. Point being, everybody in L.A. trying to be there, and it's super sold out. Wow. And that's Deion Sanders. So that energy is for fans, UCLA fans who won't go and support their team when they're ranked or the team that's even better that's ranked wow. will go see Deion. Wow. That's the that's fans. Amazing. So then the networks are going to jump on it because that's audience. And guess who else is going to jump on it? Not only his team and his players, but those prospects, those high school recruits are like four-star mm. after five-star. Everybody wants to be down with that. Everyone loves a winner. So Deion Sanders has made him reimagine how you can do it and how it can be done. So him with his 24-7 channel because his son films everything, right. amazing, genius. It's just a whole different animal. Now you see Nick Saban on what Pat McAfee every week. You're going to have to step your game up because yep. I'm everywhere doing it all and doing it right. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's something like I've, I've never seen. And speaking of these phenomenons yesterday Victor Wimbanyama he made his big debut now all of us know that Victor Wimbanyama was supposed is is projected to be some people are saying the greatest NBA player of all time potentially he made his big debut uh, last night he didn't play that many minutes he only played about 23 minutes because of foul trouble how do you see first of all what are your thoughts on Victor Wimbanyama and how do you what kind of career do you think he can have just based it's gonna on be insane know. It's going to be insane. Like, we already know it. I don't know why we're fighting it, resisting it. I mean, injuries to the side, he's going to be insane. It's the physics. So people got to understand about sports. Like LeBron James, when you saw him when he was 16 and covered Sports Illustrated, you watched that ESPN2 game, you're like, he's going to be insane. Mm -hmm. Football, basketball, every sport, basically, that we all consume and love starts off with the physics. As a doctor would tell you, and I hate to burst the bubble of a lot of parents out there, but doctors always say this, you can't out-train DNA. That hmm. means little Johnny, if he's little, he can work hard and he can be great, but if somebody who's bigger, faster, stronger, has these off-the-chart tangibles hmm. and they work hard, <laughs> you ain't gonna get with that. Maybe. And so he has the physics. If he doesn't get injured and it looks like he has to work at it, yep. the dude is blocking on closeouts three pointers yeah, that crazy. have left the hand two two yeah, minutes it's ago. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. You, you you saw the picture of him blocking the shot, and somebody left a comment like, "This is the most ridiculous picture I've ever seen in a basketball game." Like it's, the, the, yeah, the, yeah. Victor Wembanyama, he's he's something different. He's going to be something different. And speaking of different breeds you you mentioned lebron james lebron goes into his 21st season he's going to be turning 39 in december how, how do you think lebron has been able like what do you think about him being able to maintain this level of greatness and excellence for 21 years in the nba yeah man i, I think that's his most amazing attribute is the dedication to do it this long that well I mean, people got to understand, even Michael Jordan, for whatever reasons, whether it was the death of his father, <clears throat> his pursuit of baseball, fatigue, uh, issues with ownership, took two breaks. Like, this dude ain't stopped. 
can't stop, oh, won't totally. stop, bad boy. I mean, it's insane. <laughs> it's so, crazy. you know, like it always starts with the physics. Let's be real. Like some guys are just built to do things. Some guys are injury prone. So I give you an example of another freak. So Victor is a freak. LeBron's yep. a freak. Javon Kirsch was a freak. Literally called the freak. Hmm. And I remember we were at the Pro Bowl. And I was like, all right, this is his rookie year. I'm at the Pro Bowl. I'm like, damn, this dude is sick. And he played my position, but he's 6'6", 240, run a 4'3", like just crazy. Wow. So wow. we're at the Pro Bowl. And so everybody there is a beast. And we have to do 10-yard get-offs. Let me give you this, Charles. This blew my mind. Coach like, said, go. And everybody put their hand down, ready for him. Said, go. We all took our first step. <laughs> Javon was on his almost third step done with the damn 10 yards. <laughs> like, all we saw was the bottom of cleats. And we were like, his arms down to like the ground, basically, <laughs> hands this big. Just you see him today, he's in super duper shape, lean. He's a freak. And he wanted to work. Now, the only thing that undermined him was he got injured. What could undermine mm. Victor? Injuries. What's hurt LeBron the last year or two? Yeah, injuries. The injuries starting to catch up with that age. Other than that, these physical freaks, the physics takes over. And he's dedicated like that. LeBron's insane. For me, he's the GOAT. And I understand Jordan could be your GOAT. But y'all cannot sleep on what LeBron has done for this long that strong. Yeah, no, it's, it, I, I, got him, I got him in my top five. So LeBron is definitely the man. Now, before, I think we gave a teaser to our audience that we had a special guest coming. But we didn't say her name. And then some people were able to figure it out. And then somebody said, oh, wait, so he a Clipper fan like you? And I was like, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> so yes. I, I, I want to ask, I, I ask you a few questions about the Clippers. Number one, did you see the game last night? Uh, what are your thoughts about them getting Russell Westbrook? Because I think that was a great pickup. What do you think about the, the Clippers getting Russell Westbrook? Oh, man. First of all, that's my homeboy. Uh, we're family friends. Shout out to the Westbrooks, him and his wife, Nina, their kids. They go to our same school, so I see him all the time when he's around and not working. Um, dude, I love that dude. And I'm one of the guys that will fight for the narrative to change about him because he's yeah. a future Hall of Famer, yeah. Mr. Triple Double, but instead yep. he's known as West Brick. And people unfairly criticize him. Now, I do remember the Westbrook who was looking at people like, what? <laughs> you know, I know that guy too. Like, I ain't going to absolve him of all. But yes. come on, y'all. This dude is nonstop full throttle every time he's on the hardwood. And you see him now, because I saw him right before training camp, and I was like, dog, you all right? Like, you yoked up? Like, he was like, oh, I worked. I worked. And I think he has a new energy. He feels appreciated. The dude was jumping out the gym yesterday, catching yeah, lobs and everything. It was, it was so crazy. I was so hyped. Right. He's pumped, man. He's feeling the energy. He's feeling the love, so he's giving the love. That's why I'm loving it. I'm I'm a Kawhi Leonard fan, and we've been going through a lot of disappointment and heartbreak over the last – few years and I was one of the people that thought the Clippers were going to uh, win the championship in 2020 it didn't happen Kawhi's been getting injured left and right and I'm like at the end of the se last season I'm like what, what what do we do he got hurt again I'm like man I'm losing hope they roasted me in the comment section of all of these shows <laughs> and Kawhi Leonard is I, I can't even put him in my top 10 I believe he's a top I, if I say Kawhi Leonard on one of they gonna roast me so I don't even say Kawhi Leonard do you think that this will be the season the Clippers finally stay healthy and give us a full playoff run with all of them being healthy. Do you think they can do it this year? Man, the fact that you even have to ask that question, you know that. Don't. <laughs> you already know. Whatever I say doesn't even matter. And we both are sitting there wishing and hoping and praying, not knowing. Uh, yeah. Look, it's, it's the toughest decision in the world that has to be made this year if those yep. guys don't stay healthy. Like, one, stay healthy and make the decision for us. But if they don't, can't take this to the Intuit Dome, the new arena. No, you can't, can't take this any further in terms of a team having confidence that you're going to be there when you need them most. Uh, I give it to you like this. Uh, a guy who has no skin in this game. Um, one of the coaches on my team 
our basketball team for our sons is Jesse Buss. He's the Lakers owner. His son's a beast. Wow, Lil nice. Jaden, he don't give a damn. This little dude, rah, 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 he a little terror out there, right? So him and my son play ball together. But Jesse always tells me, he's like, look, when Kawhi's healthy, he's top five. Problem yep. is, you can't bet on that health. So now, look, this is an owner saying, what do you do going forward? You can't always bet that he's going to be healthy yeah. when every time you look back, he hasn't been healthy. So they're going to answer it for us, big dog. If they can figure this out through the management of his minutes and his injury history and concerns, they'll answer it for us. But I don't have any real indication other than a decision will be made if they are going to be hurt again. Got you. So to get you out of here, so I know you're, you're you're picking the Clippers like me with your heart, but who do you uh -huh. have coming out? Who do you have coming out of the East? Who do you have coming out of the West? If it's not the Clippers, and who do you think wins it all this year? I'll get you out on that question. In the NBA, yeah, I see Boston. I see Boston over there. Okay. That's a lot. But they got to play okay. Drew Holiday right, bring them off the bench first game, and I don't know what coach doing. But you know, <laughs> they got to figure that out because that's tough. All those guards they have, but. Um, Boston, Denver looks good. Yeah, Denver, man. I would have to say, yeah, Denver, like, look, y'all forget. Y'all forget. We won last year, and let's say we may be better. <laughs> and hey, some other team, yeah, other teams may have closed the gap, but there was a gap. Uh, lazily, I would say, without rooting with my heart, I'll say Boston, Denver. Who you got? For me, man, oh, damn, it's so hard not to – oh, God. They're going to roast me, so I'm not going to say the Clippers, although that's why I want to win. I <laughs> wouldn't be – I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if, if Denver goes back to the final. Pe pe people are losing their damn minds over the fact that Anthony Davis and they lost it. The, I'm like, they – they swept the Lakers last year. Like, what did what, I mean? They were they were a damn good teams. So for them to lose again, I mean, I don't know the big shocker. So to me, I think it could be Denver, and in the East, man, man, I'm gonna have to go with Giannis and Damian Lillard. But I, yeah, I think, yeah. I, I think the Nuggets could probably repeat this year. I think they could mm. win it. Again. Yeah, I think they could win it. Yeah, again. I mean, look what they're doing over there in Milwaukee. That's gonna be silly too. Uh, Middleton, a little injury concern. Uh, but still, that's a big three. Phoenix yeah. is sneaky, too. Like, you know, I, 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 Kevin Durant is my favorite player, even though I think LeBron's the GOAT. Really? Point B. Really? Wow, oh, I didn't know that. Okay, oh, deep, silky, really? silly. Silly. Wow, the, the dude that. was built in the heavens of basketball. Like, the dude is insane. <laughs> Who, who's your favorite player? <laughs> my favorite player of all time is Kobe. Uh, but I, I, I love MJ. I love Kawhi. Obviously, KD is a monster. So, for me, it's Kobe, Kawhi, and MJ. Those are my three guys. I can't pick I, 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 Kobe number one. I'll pick Kobe. How hey, come Kobe. you didn't? Well, I know LeBron. I, I heard. Ah, uh, you gonna do it? To, you 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 gonna do it to me? I I got LeBron. I got LeBron number four all time. I got him number four all time. Uh, as a matter of but fact, I we got Kawhi? a show coming out today when I'm going at LeBron. Funny enough, but nah, Kawhi. Kawhi I've I, like I roasted him all throughout uh, the summertime. Like, cause I'm like Kawhi. Like, there's nothing you can do, but. For me, I think LeBron is one of the four greatest players. I got MJ. I got Kareem. I got Kobe. There's no way in hell I'm putting LeBron over. I'm sorry. I'm just not going to do it. Kobe Kobe Bryant is one hundred. Hey, this real, respect. Rest in peace, Kobe. Stop playing, though. Come Marshall, on, man. You can't move long... him up because he passes away, dog. You can't do that. You can't oh, this, this, this is about to turn into a long show because for me, listen, Kobe, Kobe, Kobe I, I'm sure you got stuff to do. I don't want to keep you here for the next. No, 30 I'm minutes. good. Let's go. You got me. You got me up now. Let's go. <laughs> what? Now I knew. I knew. I saw you on. Um, Speak for yourself. I saw you pick LeBron then, so I already knew. Listen, mm -hmm. Marcellus, man, you okay? Let me ask you a question. <laughs> to me, I think Kobe is the best. I think Kobe is a better two-way player. I think he's more clutch. I think he's mentally tougher, and he doesn't make excuses for losing like LeBron. So to me, there's no way I could have LeBron ahead. I just can't do it. I just, I just. Okay, can't can we? All right, better two-way player. Ah, that's you tough. You know he's a better two-way. He got more. Yeah, speed. you know that. Yes, like Kobe was unstoppable. See, this is the problem when you split hairs. It's like people think you're really dissing the other guy. You're like, yeah. no, these are two A pluses that we're yeah, just yeah. trying to say, yeah, yeah. which yeah. paper am I going to take? You know, and I'm like, for me, why LeBron is the longevity? 
Not only mm-hmm. how he started, he started faster than Kobe, started better than Kobe, kept it at that high level, still up there, maybe a notch off right now, but didn't respectfully fall off like Kobe did with the yeah, injuries just yeah. collapsing. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And that counts because if we're going to do it to Jordan and then the breaks and then the wizard years, it's like y'all – Y'all not going to give LeBron the props for not falling off, but then we're going to disregard it for the other two greats to keep him up there. To me, it all counts, you know? Nas' first album company. and all okay. the ones he had with Hit Boy. You know got what I mean? Like, they all you, count. Got you, got you, got you. So the full, the full body of work is what you're, what you're judging it on. Yeah, and we're not done with that body of work. The movie's still playing. No credits yet with LeBron. We're still watching that movie, and it's still damn good. He's just got to work on Anthony Davis and his mentals. But as we talked about before, Anthony Davis doesn't feel comfortable fully flexing. He's going through the same dynamic and suffering that we talked about earlier in the show. So that's why you don't see AD consistently be great. It's a tough full flex for AD in that number two role. For, for me, for the, the thing, the thing with AD is, and this may surprise some Laker fans, I just don't like the the piling on on him like okay they lost the game he didn't score in the second half we get it we know that 80 can be inconsistent but if 80 goes out tomorrow and gets uh, and drops 40 we're gonna be saying man 80 is a great <laughs> to me i'm like the guy did help the lakers win it i mean he did do something he was like a really good player last year when lebron went down and they had to make that run at the trade deadline to me i think people are expecting out of ad something he's not AD is not going to be Giannis or Nikola Jokic. He's still a great player, and I think the sooner people realize that, the happier they'll be because I don't see AD being a a LeBron, like an alpha. I I never saw it, in my opinion. Yeah, it's tough for him because uh, when we saw him being the alpha, it was on a team that wasn't that good. So we're like, oh, it's easy to flex then. But now you're on this team. But we even saw this role being the number two be a little difficult for a Dwayne Wade, let right. alone right. Kobe and Shaq. Like right. Kobe was like, well, they had to run each other off. So people always like, come on, AD, come on, AD. I'm like, if AD goes like AD can go outside of the injuries, it's going to be a problem. Kyrie and LeBron. When Kyrie was like, all right, y'all giving him all that credit for that block? I made the three-pointer. No credit. Okay, <laughs> let me flex. Let me it flex. always becomes an issue when two top dogs really fully flex. Right. That said, um, I'm looking at AD like this. Coaches get frustrated with an AD type of player, and I think that's why fans do. Because coaches always preach reliability. I need you to be consistent. I don't even care if it's a B minus. I know I can get and count on that B minus. But if you give me an A, and then you give me a D, and then you give me an F, and then you give me a B, he like, dog, I can't work with that because that's not consistent. That's I not see. something that we can repeat. That's I not see. something that's reliable. So fans, they come there one day with the AD jersey on. He scored 40 last night. Then he dropped nothing in the second half. Then you're like, all right, I'm going to burn it. And then <laughs> next thing you know, the dude is like, great again. Then you're like, all right, I'm going to wear it again. Then he sucks again. And you're like, <laughs> what is going on with that? He's just a little too up and down. Yeah, no, he, he he is. And given the fact that he's a Laker, I think that also adds more pressure. Uh, I remember when the Clippers got Paul George. And I like Paul George. I don't know him, but I like Paul George. And I remember that run in the bubble. And Kawhi was playing his butt off in round one and in round two. And PG would be on one game. He would be off the next game. And the day Kawhi had that bad game seven and PG had another bad game, it was a wrap. So right. I can understand yep. that. But uh, for me, man, I I, I just I, I ne- maybe I never viewed AD that way. I mean, I never. He's playing down to his talent. Some people are saying, "Why doesn't he go into the?" AD has said a hundred times, "I don't want to play at five. I don't. So why are people so shy? I don't know, man. Maybe I don't know. I I, I, I think know. those people need to go to an NBA game and not look at their phones, not look in the crowd to see what celebs are there, but watch in the paint how it goes down. Because people mm-hmm. act like basketball is not physical. Go to a game and watch them dudes down there. The big old giraffes and elephants. <laughs> just, bah, bah. And they be like, no five for me, man. No five. <laughs> it's hell. Yeah, nah. So to, to me, I, th- I think the Lakers can be good. I'm not picking them. I still think it's going to be Denver. 
if, if the Clippers are healthy in my heart, I think the Clippers are going to win it all, but I don't want to say that out again. I, I, I'm not going to say I'm not going to say <laughs> You just hate roast your me. comments because no, they're no, going to no, light you up with that. They be roasting me, man. If I get off YouTube, I jump on Instagram. They roasting me there, too. So these dudes are ruthless, man. So, nah, but uh, definitely, man, it was definitely a pleasure uh, having you on the show today. I appreciate you taking out the time um, to come in, you know, bless us with your presence on this show. Uh, I said it in that t in that message that you left us on Instagram, and I'm going to say here publicly, total class act, uh, very, very nice person, uh, pleasant interview. So, Marcella Swally, thank you so much, man. We really appreciate you taking out your time to be here with us today. It's uh, been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Man, salute to you and what you're doing over there. You and Marco, uh, much respect. Just keep doing it the way that you're doing it, man. I, I love how you guys have hit the ground running and you guys have grown to the success that I desire to have and to continue to do it the right way. So enough of us in Alliance doing it the way that we're doing it. I'm certain that it's going to make an impact Absolutely. and help self-correct this sports media landscape. Appreciate Absolutely. you, brother. So we want to thank you for watching the full show. If you want to support this channel, please go over to Spotify or Apple Podcasts and search for the Dreamers Pro Show and leave a review. Thank you very much.